Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Juice Baseball Channel, and welcome back to another episode of the New York Mets Legends Fantasy Draft Series here on MLB The Show 23. That is right, we return to the franchise, and it is time for September. We've got one month remaining in the second season here in New York. One month separates us from redemption when we can get to October and play some postseason baseball, get back to the World Series, hopefully go up against the Chicago White Sox so that we can get our revenge on them. But unfortunately for us, I think the Chicago White Sox suck this year. They do. They are 66 and 71 not going to be anywhere near the postseason this year. So unfortunately for us, we will not be able to get our revenge to the full extent. Maybe some sometime down the line, the White Sox will get back to the World Series and face us for a rematch. But I, I just, we need to get back to the World Series. We made it there with 97 wins last season. We already have 90 this, this year. So if we can win seven more games in the month of September, we're going to be b breaking the record for our uh, win totals in this series. And I think we should be able to do I think we can win 100 games. I think it's possible. We've made some moves in the past episodes with the trade deadline, bringing in uh, Tom Glavin. And then in the lineup spot, bringing in Albert Pujols and Barry Bonds. Both men are unbelievable. I mean, Albert Pujols has got 40 home runs this year. Bonds has got 32. Mantle's even got 30. We've been talking about Griffey all year. Griffey just has not been the same. And maybe that's the place that he is in the in the rotation or the, uh, the order. Maybe he's not liking hitting five. I don't know, but he's just not really been the same type of player that he was last season. I mean, he had 42 home runs, and that could be there's so much more star power around him now that maybe he's just not getting the looks from the pitchers. I don't know. You'd feel like that would be more helpful to him because, oh, he's got Barry Bonds and Willie Mays surrounding him and Albert Pujols and Johnny Bench. He's got all these guys surrounding him that the pitcher would be just gassed by the time he comes up, but... I don't know, he just hasn't been having the greatest of seasons. Everybody else has been playing unbelievably well, except for Mr. Griffey, which is kind of making me upset because I'm a huge King Griffey Jr. fan, so it kind of makes me upset. But you know what time it is. It is the month of September, which means we've got September call-ups. Now, I'm not really sure what the move is. I think one of the moves is to bring in an arm for the bullpen. I don't know if that's a long relief guy, like a like a, a starter to put in the bullpen for possible like deep games in the the playoffs. Like if we go extra innings or something, maybe that's a David Price who has been absolutely destroying AAA baseball, which you would expect because he's 27 years old, he's 96 overall, and he's really really good. So he's got a 1.98 ERA, 19 wins and one loss. Obviously, that's good enough to be in the majors. It's just is he the right guy to call up? Or do we do we want to prioritize winning the AAA championship? That's a big question. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> or do we go with a closer to bring in the bullpen? I don't know. I'm trying to figure that out right now. And then if we bring in a pitcher, do we bring in two pitchers? Or do we bring in a uh, a hitter? Like, do we bring up David Wright? That's also a possibility. He's got 100 RBIs this season in AAA, which is expected because he's David Wright. Or do we call up Elvis Andrews? Or we, what do we do here? I th or do we call up Bryce Harper? There's a bunch of different opportunities, a bunch of different people we could call up. I think the main one is to call up David Wright. I think he's he's up here now. He can only play third base, but we have a, a little bit of variety there now with David Wright being up here. And I think David Price is probably the other guy. The only other person that I would consider is Craig Kimbrell, maybe? because he's been doing so well at AAA. But we could also bring up Clay Holmes just for the overall factor that he's an 80 overall. He's pitched pretty well in the time that he's been down in, in AAA. His ERA is pretty bad, but he's he's pitched 10 innings. He allowed 10 innings. Actually, he hasn't really pitched that well now that I look at his numbers. So Clay Holmes is probably not the guy. Craig Kimbrell, Craig Kimbrell is probably the guy that we call up, or it's David Price. It's just a matter of do we want a guy that can work more finesse in terms of like short innings late in the game? Or do you want a guy like David Price who's going to come in and, and pitch long relief 
for the postseason. I don't, I don't know. I think we need a guy like Craig Kimbrell on the roster for the postseason. So we're going to call up Craig. He's now in the bullpen. So he'll be another guy that we can we can call to uh, if we need to in the postseason. And then in the lineups, we've got another big, awesome bat off the bench. We have an amazing bench. I mean, look at this bench. This bench could be an all-star team in itself. But that's the two call-ups we're going to make. Now we have to decide who we're going to play. We're probably going to play a division game because that could be pretty fun. But the only division games that we have are against the Nationals, right? I mean, we have the Braves, but... The Braves aren't really in it. Neither are the, the Nationals. I mean, to be fair, nobody's in it. I mean, we're 19 games ahead of the Phillies. So nobody's really in the race anymore. Have we? We've clinched, right? I didn't even check, take a look. No, we haven't clinched. So there's technically, if we lose every single game and the Phillies win every single game, there's still a chance that we could lose this uh, division. But I don't think that's going to happen. Let's simulate the first game of the month against the Reds. We did lose it, actually, so that's funny. Uh play the Dodgers we beat them I'm trying to keep track of when we clinch the division so let's simulate the series against the Dodgers Griffey's actually out for a couple days with a strained calf we are 20 games up we have not clinched it just yet and now we play the Braves Maddox Otani and Glavin but we're at home for this one I kind of want to be on the road for the game that we play today so looks like we're going to simulate the series against the Braves and we have beat them two to three Two to one, and we did. We clinched the division with the wins against the Braves. 94 and 49. We have the best record in baseball by far. The next best would be the Red Sox and Padres with 84 wins, it looks like. Those are the next best teams, but that's kind of tragic. And we have officially clinched the division. Now we just got to hold out and try to win 100 games, even though we lost two or three against the Nationals. We could play against the Pirates. I'm pretty sure I talked about playing against the Pirates in the last episode because I do enjoy their stadium or their ballpark. But I enjoy the National Ballpark too. It's just a matter of who do I want to pitch with. Do we want to pitch with Otani, Glavin, Felix? We've pitched with King Felix before. Babe Ruth, Maddox. Uh, do we want to pitch with Otani? We've pitched with, we've pitched with everybody, I think, right? We've pitched with Felix. The only guy that we haven't pitched with is Babe Ruth, and that's by design. Let's play game three of the Pirates series. We'll pitch with Felix Hernandez up against Spencer Turnbull. We'll go on the road to Pittsburgh. 96 wins so far. Although I could play the game that gets us win 100. That could be pretty fun. But no, we'll play this game against the Pirates. We are first in literally every category. Look at that. That's pretty cool. Hope you guys go and enjoy. If you do, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, join the Juice Club. Next episode is going to be the postseason, year number two. Can we get our revenge? I hope so. But today we got to focus on the Pirates. We got to focus on winning 100 games. We're only four games away, and we can start that right here. We can check one off by beating the Pirates. Let's get it. Let's win the series. I'll see you guys in the game. Welcome everyone to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania and gorgeous PNC Park. MLB The Show's Game of the Week is coming your way. It's the New York Mets going up against the Pittsburgh Pirates. Joined by my partner Chris Singleton, I'm John Chomby. Now both sides, this game really matters as the postseason is approaching. Well, at this point of the year, guys are a little bit tired, but you've got to find a way to dig deeper and bring out your best with so much opportunity to be able to punch your ticket for October. So just about set now, getting the nod in this one, number 22. But Chris, he hasn't exactly been stellar here on his home mound. Well, I'll say this. All right, the captain is at the plate to lead off this one, and it looks like we're not going up against Spencer Turnbull. They must have called an audible last second, and they are playing, uh, they're starting Aaron Perry. I don't know who that is, but he is on the mound to start this game for Pittsburgh. As he, he does get Jeter to ground out to shortstop, so that's something. I have no idea who this is, but we can't focus on... We can't focus on that right now because we got to focus on winning this game, getting closer to 100 wins. Obviously, I want to go past 100 wins because we still have, what, like two and a half weeks left to go in the season? So there's still obvious possibilities to get 
over 100 wins. And we're only four games away from that right now as Albert Pujols sends that to left center. Hamilton will make the play. Get it back into the infield. But Pujols gets us, gets us going here. Two outs. And now it's time for Barry Bonds with a full count ahead of him. Can Barry Bonds electrify this team? And he can't. He stares at a great pitch by Aaron Perry. And he sits down, strikeout, but we got King Felix on the mound. We got ourselves a possible Cy Young contender in King Felix. I don't know if he is going to win it. He might not even really be in the running. I haven't taken a look in a, in a little bit. But the first out is caught by Mickey Mantle on right center. Ken Griffey Sr., the father of the man that we have playing right field, Ken Griffey Jr. See if we can get him out. I hope so. 2-1 count. Felix sends the circle change his way in top of it. I don't know what he was sitting on there. Maybe a fastball? He seemed to be pretty early, too. Here comes the slider. White right to Wade Boggs. And that is a line out. Ralph Kiner's up. Two down in the inning. Here comes the two-seamer. Stares at it right across the plate. A six-time All-Star for Mr. Kiner. And he's staring at a 1-2 count. Fouls off the slider. Thought I had him there. That's okay, because we'll go circle change. This caught Griffey Sr. off guard, and it kind of caught Kiner off guard as well. I wouldn't say he was particularly ready for it, but he was just happy to get enough contact on it. Send it foul. He stares at the 12-6. Doesn't go after it. You know what? We're going to send some heat. Low and inside. Send him the gas. He stares at it inside. Good take. Very good take. We'll give him a two-seamer, a little off-speed heat. And it's right over the top. Strike three, inning over. Good job from Felix. And that makes Sammy Sosa lead off. I'm guessing at DH because I think Griffey's in, uh, Griffey's in right field today. Oh, what a play. It's shortstop makes the throw, and he got it to, to Prince Fielder at first. I don't even know who that is at shortstop, but it's a terrific diving play. What an effort. That's a gold glove type of stop right there. Now Willie Mays is up. The home run derby champion. Yeah, I didn't forget. The home run derby champion sends that into center field. Hamilton will make the field. Uh, will field the ball and send it into second base. But I was going to try to go to second, but 83 speed's not amazing. So he might have been able to get thrown out there. Didn't want to risk it. Johnny Bench hitting 280 on the year. And Johnny Bench right back up the middle past the the pitcher and past the second baseman. Hamilton's been a busy guy so far. That's three or four separate plays he's had to make. And now Alfonso Soriano has had a really, really good year hitting the, bot the bottom of this order. He's had a really good year, but I could not keep the good year going. Sends that to, again, Josh Hamilton. He makes another play. And there's two down in the inning with two on for Wade Boggs. Come on, Wade. If you could get us something in the outfield, I think Willie Mays can score. And that's certainly going to do the job. Willie Mays will come around third to score. I'm going to send my main man, uh, what's his face, <laughs> Johnny Bench. I forgot who was on first for a second. Over to third. And Wade Boggs does the dang thing. He scores a run. And the Mets are up 1-0 in Pittsburgh. The Steel City was not ready for the New York Mets. Unfortunately, Jeter can't keep the inning going. He grounds the third base, goes the easy way to second, and the inning is over. But not before Wade Boggs got us on the board with an RBI single. But now we're taking on the Prince. It's the King versus the Prince. And he sends that to left field, but it hooks foul just barely. That was a dangerous pitch. Felix has got to not make a mistake here against a Deadly hitter in Prince Fielder. We'll give him the 12-6. He's not going to be ready for it. Absolutely no shot. He was not ready for it. Strike three. And Prince Fielder sits his chonky butt down. Josh Hamilton's up now. That's a dangerous back-to-back -back right there. 4-5. Prince Fielder, Josh Hamilton. We'll give him a little dose of the circle chain. See what he can do with it. And that is a grounder to the captain at short. Fields it. On to first. Two down. Beautifully done. Trace Thompson is up. Brother of NBA superstar Clay Thompson. Do you call him a superstar? Maybe. I mean, he's he's on the same team with a superstar like Steph Curry. I'd probably say that Clay's more of a star, not a superstar. Well, I, don't, 
don't know. You, you could go either way. But his brother is neither as he strikes out swinging to end the inning. And we go up top three. Mickey Mantle will lead off. 2-1 count. I need a home run, and Mickey Mantle delivers. Santa Maria. That one is out of here. I was literally just thinking in my head. I was thinking, we need a home run. I haven't gotten one in a few episodes, I don't think. Or maybe I have. I don't remember. It's been a while since I recorded the last episode. But I needed a home run to get off the snide. And Mickey Mantle delivers number 33 on the season for him. He sent that to deep right field. And he knew it right away. Mm. That's 44 inches of wood right there. Wrapping around that ball. 1-1 one, one count to the machine. And Albert Pujols will send that through the gap into left field. And that is a single for him. Barry Bonds now up. Nobody on. Nobody out. One on. Come on, Barry. And Aaron Perry, is he a relief pitcher? Or maybe he pitched recently? He's already got pretty low energy for a, a supposed starter. I mean, we're only in the third inning. He's pitched, what, 49 pitches? That's not horrible for a starter and he's already got into the the deep yellow unless he pitched recently and they're pitching him again or he's a relief pitcher and just hasn't doesn't have that great stamina i don't know what's going on here but he's got pretty low stamina already we can take advantage of that i mean look at that energy it's almost in the orange it basically is in the orange so if we could take advantage of that that'd be really useful if sosa hits that ball into left field past the diving shortstop and there's two on with one out all right boys willie mays is up he got on base last time can he do it again oh willie i think i timed it wrong yeah it says i'm early that could have been a home run i got too anxious i saw the pitch coming i wanted to hit it hard and i got too anxious that's a mistake by me. I think this guy, this guy's got to be a relief pitcher. I don't know. We'll take a, we see if we can take a look at him. He's only got a three pitch mix. A lot of starters, I, I don't really know many starters that have three pitches and that's it. I, I know some, it's possible obviously, but three pitches, that's it. See if we could take a look at the guy's stats here. Box score, uh, no, not the box score. Uh, player stats, pitchers for the Mets. Aaron Perry, let's take a look at his player card. Yeah, he's a relief pitcher who got the start today for some... And it seems like he's gotten... Has he started games? He started no games except for today. Why is he on the mound? Did Spencer Turnbull get hurt? Hold on. Let me go to the player stats again. Here's who we were supposed to go up against today. It doesn't say he has an injury in the top corner top right corner usually that's where it says if he has an injury or not i don't know this is who we were supposed to face and yet we're facing a relief pitcher what a weird what a weird thing this is the shortstop urias who made that amazing diving play earlier in the game now he gets his first chance to hit bottom three leading off and he strikes out swinging to the king everybody bows down to the king at some point and now it's brandon lowe with a 1-1 count himself, he fouls off the two-seamer. We'll give him a little taste of the circler. See if he can handle it. He can't handle. Stares at it. Strike three. And that's strikeout number five already for Felix. And now it's Luis Torrens. And he has that into foul territory. Got a nice cut on that one, but not good enough. Here comes the slider. Oh, it's a 1-2-3. Three up, three down, strikes out the side, and the king is here. He's arrived on his throne. Alfonso Soriano will lead off the fourth for the Mets. Aaron Perry, the relief pitcher, started the game for the Pirates. Doesn't have a lot of energy. Can Soriano beat the throw? Yes, he can by a mile with that 93 speed. Urias gave it a good shot. And now the man that got us... One of our two runs today, the one run that came from not a home run, Wade Boggs got a good rip on that one, but that goes foul. I wonder if the PCI was placed better, if that could have been a home run. 
It's a good question, but unfortunately I missed that one, and that's a strikeout. Boggs goes down, and 0 for 2 for the captain. That is not like Derek Jeter. He doesn't usually struggle out the gates, but this man has literally no energy, so we're just going to be picking him apart until they start to pull him. I'm going to send Soriano around third to home. Jeter's got himself a double. If he was faster, I could have sent him three. But 86 speed's not fast enough. But the captain gets it done. An RBI double for Jeter, and they are finally pulling Aaron Perry. It might be a little too late, though. They bring in Zach Plesak. Okay. Mickey Mantle's up. He had the home run last time he was up. Let's see if he can do it again. Not going to swing at that one. Circle change low in the zone. One out, runner on second. Already scored one this inning. Mantle looking to do it again, but that's too hard hit in the right field. Griffey Sr., he's got a good enough arm on him. I think Jeter would have been thrown out if I would have tried to go. So runners on the corners for the machine. Albert Pujols, 1-1 one, one count. Should have swung. I wasn't sure how that was going to curve. I didn't know. I couldn't tell if it was a fastball or not right there. That one right up the middle. Jeter will score. Mantle goes to second. Pujols on first. And it's a 4-0 lead for the Mets here in Pittsburgh. That's what I like to see, baby. Good job from Pujols. And now Barry Bonds, who's 0-2 for 2 today with a strikeout, I think. Come on, come on, come on. Barry Bonds, I really want to hit a home run. That's why I traded for Barry Bonds, because I wanted to hit home runs with him. <laughs> That's what Barry Bonds does. He's literally the home run king all time. Even if you think he he uh, cheated to do it, which he did. Barry Bonds, can he beat the throw? No, he can't, but he does move the runners. <sighs> Man, I want to hit a home run with Barry Bonds so fast. In what universe is Prince Fielder going to make that diving play? <laughs> Uh, maybe like rookie year Prince Fielder, but not not the Prince Fielder that the model is based after. That's for sure. Oh, Sammy Sosa just got two. A beautifully placed pitch. Sosa directs it right into center field, and he unloads the bases. He loves those Armor All hot dogs. That's for sure. Sammy Sosa delivers. It's six to nothing. Two outs. Willie Mays grounds to shortstop. Goes the easy way, and that's the inning. But we've done enough damage. Six to nothing. I'm feeling pretty good for Mr. Felix. Especially because he's the king and he's been killing it with strikeouts today. He might get number, what, six or seven? I think this might be seven. If he strikes him out and he does, Paul Molitor down swinging. That's number seven for the king. The king has taken his throne. You, you can't hunt what you can't kill, baby. You can't take the king. He's too good, although he is on a full count against Griffey Sr. Can I get him to strike out? I can get him to get a hit. That's into the left center gap. Mantle gives chase, but that's going to be at least two. Get it in. Get it in. Get it in. He's going to go three. Griffey Sr. with a one-out triple, and that might be what the Pirates needed to start rallying. I didn't know Griffey Sr. had the wheels on him like that. He proved me wrong. Faster than his son, that's for sure. 1-2 to Ralph Kiner. Here comes the slider. That's the real... I'm not going to go home. <laughs> that's the real first sign of weakness. Sign of cracks in the crown of King Felix. He allows the shutout to go away. 6-1 to one now. But that was a really, really well done hit by... Ken Griffey Sr. there. A one-out triple. I mean, he hit it perfectly in the left center gap. It went all the way to the wall, right in that little corner of the wall in the bullpen. It was disgustingly placed. But we got to be careful here not to walk Fielder and send Hamilton up with a runner on, and he does walk. <sighs> I thought I could get him chasing with that slider, but he doesn't fall for it. Luckily, we don't have to worry about Fielder stealing, but that's not a problem when Hamilton's going to bloop that into left field. Willie Mays gets it, and they're going to send Fielder home. Jeter, the rally, and Fielder's out. What are you doing? You got Prince Fielder on the mound. Hamilton just got you a double, and you send Fielder around home? I know Willie Mays didn't look like he was going to be able to get that ball in quickly, but it's Prince Fielder. I'd understand if it was 
almost anybody else on the bases, but you've got Prince Fielder running bases, and you think you can outrun Willie, the combination of Willie Mays and Derek Jeter? I don't think so. A mistake on the base paths for the Pirates, but they do have one run, so they're not going to get shut out today. I was kind of hoping they would, but hey, if we still get the win, a win is a win, so can't be too upset, especially when we're trying so desperately to get past 100 wins. Everyone counts. But this inning flying by pretty fast, top of the, fu top of the fifth here. Wade Boggs over the glove of Urias into left field. And that's a two-out single for Boggs, keeping the inning alive. Alive and well, baby. And the captain's up. He's got that RBI double. Can he get more? Jeter to third base. On to second. Ends the inning. They've done that like three times now. <laughs> that seems to be their, their go-to move. Trace Thompson back up. He's got a 1-1 count. Bottom five. Felix sends in the two-seamer. Trace got around that one, but not good enough. Here comes the slider, and he chased it, but they don't call strike three. How do you not call strike three on that? He clearly went around. I mean, he, he pulled himself to that one. Unbelievable they don't call that strike three. We'll try to get him on the 12-6. He doesn't fall for it. He hits that into center field, and that's a leadoff single. I don't know how they don't call that strike, a, or that swing a strike. He clearly wanted to swing at it, and he basically went all the way around. Urias goes down on the two-seamer, so that's the first out. Now we can play for the double play, maybe? Eight strikeouts for King Felix is kind of crazy. He's having himself a great day. 2-1 count to low. <sighs> Felix starting to not locate his pitches down low. Come on, Felix. Figure it out. Here comes the four-seam. Oh, my God. Brandon Lowe sent that packing to right field. Sosa off the wall. It's going to be an RBI triple for Brandon Lowe. There was, I wasn't going to be able to make a play on that. That was literally off the very tip top of the wall. I had no shot of making a play on that, but we made Luis Torrens look stupid on that swing. That's number nine for Felix. I think we'll let Felix go maybe seven. Please go foul. Please go foul. Please go foul. Oh, it just went fair for an automatic double. Unbelievable. One, two count to Griffey Sr. That's to Soriano. End of the inning. They do get two runs in the inning, though. We'll, we'll give him the sixth, and we'll see how he does. If he has another quick inning like he had previously. But if he has back-to-back -back innings that are bad, then I'm, I'm probably going to pull him for the seventh. Maybe even pull him in the sixth, depending on how bad it gets. Because now our six to nothing lead is now six to one, and then six to three. So we are slowly losing that cushion that we had. Pujols got a good piece of it into center field. Runners on first and second, nobody out. That ball does get past the shortstop cutoff, man. But nobody on base is fast enough to do anything with it. And that leaves Barry Bonds. 0 for three, nobody out, and a two one count. Come on, Barry. I'm begging you to do something. That was the main reason why I traded for you is because I wanted to do some damage with you. But yet, I have not done anything significant with it. I don't even know if I've gotten many hits with it. I may have gotten like two. I don't even remember. I've definitely not gotten a home run. But maybe that can change. Nope, it's going to be bases loaded, though, for Griffey. Wait, Griffey's not playing today. It's Sosa, right? Oh, that's right. Griffey's got the injury. He's still injured with the calf thing, isn't he? Duh. That's why Sosa's playing. Sosa's in right field today. I don't know why that just came to my mind now. We're in the sixth inning. Good take by Sosa. 2-1 count. Base is loaded. Nobody out. This would be a perfect time for a grand slam to put this one away. Come on, Sosa. I know you got it in you. Or a walk. If you walk in a run, I guess that'd be cool. I could certainly be down for that. It's not going to be a walk, though. It's going to clear the bases because I'm sending everybody home. Barry Bond's going to be around third. Sosa will clear all the bases. Nobody out. Three-run double 
for Sammy Sosa. Have yourself a day. And they pull Zach Plesak to bring in Joel Payampas, or Pay Payamps. I don't know how to pronounce his name. He's going to get shelled. It doesn't matter. Willie Mays is up. He gets that past, and it's going to be runners on the corners. I could send Sosa home, but that would have been probably a thrown out. He probably would have got thrown out. Better not to send him. Johnny Bench is up, though. If Johnny Bench puts something in the outfield, we could have some damage. Even more damage. He's going to take that one, 2-1. One. Come on, Johnny. Show me what you're made of, baby. Here comes the pitch. Johnny Bench. And that's going to be beautifully done. Still nobody out. And that is 10-3. It's starting to pile up for the Pirates. Alfonso Soriano steps back up. He's one for three today. And Soriano got a piece of it. We've got bases loaded. I might as well keep them loaded for Wade Boggs. I know that it's unlikely for Wade Boggs to hit a grand slam, but it'd be pretty cool if he did. Full count to Boggs. Nobody out. Are we going to see a walk here? We could have, but Wade Boggs. Oh, what a play by the, sh the second baseman, Brandon Lowe. But it's an RBI single for Boggs, and the captain is up. I thought that was going to get up to uh, or center field, but it, it's a great play by Lowe. Not good enough to get an out. And Jeter will pop that in, and I'm going to keep the bases loaded, baby. We might as well. I probably could have scored another one. Soriano most likely would have went around to score. But we got to try. We got to keep trying for this, this grand slam. And the man that's hit the home run today, Mickey Mantle, is up. So if anybody's going to do it, it's going to be him. Mickey Mantle, not going to get the home run. Will he get an RBI? He does get one RBI, and it's a fielder's choice. So the bases are no longer loaded. But they do pull the new, the other relief pitcher. And Jonathan Loisiga is in the game now four for four for albert Pujols. the machine has been cooking today i didn't realize he was having such a good day today and he's gonna have a walk and just like that the bases weren't unloaded for too long because here he is this is the moment this is the moment i've been waiting for barry bonds bases loaded and one out barry Bonds. no i wanted it so bad it should have been me. He does get two RBIs. I guess that's fine. But I wanted the grand salami. I wanted it salami so bad. It doesn't happen. Two RBIs. It's 15-3. to three. This is just getting bad now. It's getting ugly for the Pirates here at PNC. 2-1 count to Sosa, who has been killing the relief pitching today. To be fair, it's been all relief pitching. Two-time home run champion, Sammy Sosa. Not going to do that this year, though. He's had a good year. But nothing like he did in the 2000s. Oh, my good heavens. I wanted to smoke that baseball. Oh, they didn't even... What? Ken Griffey Sr., what are you doing? <laughs> it's an RBI double for Sosa. But I, uh, I wanted a three-run homer there, and I thought I did. I just missed it. I bet that would have been a home run if I was just slightly better on the PCI placement. Willie Mays. Stopped by Urias, but not stopped enough. Another RBI. We are batting around, baby. This is in an ugly inning for the Pirates. No confidence in Loisaga. <laughs> and it's, uh, it's understandable. Johnny Bench. That's finally going to be the second out. I, didn't, I don't know how I didn't get enough of that. I mean, the timing was good. The placement with PCI placement was good. Just didn't really hit it well, I guess. And Soriano's back up for, I think, the second time in the inning. I think we've officially batted around. Soriano going to go down and get that one. Another RBI. We are mercy rule in the Pittsburgh Pirates here. It's getting ugly. They pull another relief pitcher, Adam Adovino is in the game now. Loisaga got got canned. Oh my god, this is getting out of control, even for me. 
Wade Boggs will pop that in and we could keep bases loaded, but I'm gonna send him. What does it matter? Soriano's at third. Boggs scores an RBI. Willie Mays scores again. How many times can we bat around? Can we set a record? That'd be cool. Jeter is up. Jeter's got one right in his face. 3-1 count, and he's got himself an RBI. 20-3. to three. This is getting out of hand, ladies and gentlemen. This is getting out of hand. Mickey Mantle. Show me what you got, Mickey. Oh, ball. Thank you. That's cool. I was going to swing at that. It's a good thing I didn't. 3-1 count to Mantle. Can Mickey Mantle do the dang thing? Mickey! I was late. I was late. And now it's a full count. Do we think he's going to throw a slider? I think he's going to throw a high slider. I'm going to call it up there. See what happens. It's low again, and Mickey Mantle loads the bases. He loads the bases. This is getting ugly. The machine steps again. He walked in this inning. And he will grand slam, I think. Yes, he will! Albert Pools with a grand slam! The salami has arrived! Santa Maria! I knew I could do it. I just needed the right guy. And it's the machine. Five for five with a walk and a salami. Yes, sirree. Albert Pujols just got a hanger. Hardly know her. And he sent that to left field. Souvenir time. And they bring in another relief pitcher. It's Nick Anderson. Oh my god. They've burned through, what, four relief pitchers in this inning alone? How many times are we going to bat around? That drops just foul for Barry Bonds. I'm glad that I finally got myself the, uh, the Grand Slam. I've been looking for it all day. And I finally got it. And Nick Anderson is the guy to get out of the inning. 24 to 3. What? What a rally. Can I see the, uh, let me see. So we scored 18 runs. 18 runs in that inning. That is unreal. Oh, my God. They should have mercy ruled the Pirates on that one. Sweet baby Jesus. That got out of hand quickly. I mean, they just, their bullpen's not good. They just kept giving me meatballs. What do you want me to do? And King Felix, he's not taking any prisoners. He's got 10 strikeouts. And that's a swing and a miss from the Prince. And we're going to give him a little taste of the circle change. How is he 0 for 1? He's 0 for 1 with a walk. These guys, we've hit like six different times. Our guys have been up. <laughs> this is the bottom of the six. This is the third time he's been to the plate. Oh, my God. This is insane. Oh, I left a hanger, and Fielder makes me pay. Is that out of the ballpark? Oh, no. It, it's back in the ballpark, but not, not out of it. Prince Fielder makes me pay. I hung that curveball, that 12-6, way too much in the center of the zone. Yeah, I was getting I'm getting a little too careless. I gotta I gotta lock back in. We had such an amazing sixth inning. I gotta lock back in here with with uh, Felix. Getting a little too carried away. I'm gonna throw some heat though on Hamilton. Dare him to hit me. Like uh, the Joker in the Dark Knight, just staring at Batman in the middle of the road, saying, "Hit me! Come on, hit me!" That's what I was doing to Hamilton. One one count to Trace Thompson. Two down in the inning. Maybe the Pirates think that they have life now that Fielder hit that home run. And that was a no-doubter, too. That was a moonshot, a rocket in the right field. I think this is going to be the last inning for Felix. He's had such a good day today, but I don't really want him to go anymore. I want to I wanna bring the bullpen in, give him a break. I mean, 11 strikeouts. He's done his job. And we don't really need him to pitch anymore. <laughs> We have 24 freaking runs. It's not like we need Felix on the mound anymore. So I'm going to warm somebody up. Let's get uh, let's get the new guy. Let's get Kimbrel up, and let's also get Vita Blue up. Warm up those two guys. They can probably get us through the rest of the game, to be honest with you. Sosa 
is up. He's got so many doubles today that it's crazy. You're really going to call that a strike. That's unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. I don't believe it. It's unbelievable. One, two count to Sosa. You're going to give me that. You're really going to give me that. Sosa with a leadoff single into left field. What are these Pirates doing? Their bullpen. It's a good thing that the Pirates aren't going to be making the postseason because their bullpen is not good. They would get cooked. And that's probably why they're not in contention for the postseason because their bullpen is so bad. Is Willie Mays going to be able to get a hit here? No, he's not. Left fielder Ralph Kiner makes the play. And that's one down in the inning. I think all the Pirates fans want this inning to go a lot quicker than what last inning did. And I think it will. I don't think we'll have the kind of energy to be able to hit. Did we hit around twice in that inning or was it once? I'm going to send my man to third here. I think he can out throw or he can outrun Hamilton. And he does. Sosa to third. Bench to second. One out. Runners on, first, on second and third for Alfonso Soriano. Come on, Alfonso. Can you score any more runs? I mean, we don't need to score any more runs, but he's going to. Make it 26. Alfonso Soriano with a shot in the left field. It's a two-run double. I mean, it's just it's just funny at this point. <laughs> Wade Boggs has arrived. We're stat padding now. We're just getting our guys' average up. We're getting our RBI numbers up. We're doing all kinds of stuff. Our OPS, our, our on-base percentage, all kinds of crap. Our war, we're getting it all up. And we are raising the ERA of all the relief pitchers in the Pirate bullpen. That's going to be two outs, but he does push Soriano to the third, so Wade Boggs does a job. And to be fair, he didn't really need to do much. We're not trying to I'm not even trying to score. I'm just swinging, and it just so happens that uh, the ball is going into dangerous territory for the Pittsburgh Pirates. Jeter, hardly know her, almost with a hit into left field that could have been dangerous, maybe even an RBI double. I definitely could have seen that. One, two count, two outs. Jeter back up the middle. Urias makes another diving play. At this point, I think he's just having fun diving. I don't think he really is even trying to stop these. <laughs> another bullpen switch. It's Duran now. I think we've played him before, haven't we? I don't remember. But he's in now, and I missed that one with Mickey Mantle. I was really late on that. Two, two count. How many bullpen guys have they gone through in this, just in the past couple of innings alone? I mean, they went through like four in the sixth, and I was late again. I'm not timing up that fastball very well. But that is the end of the inning. We scored even more runs. <laughs> All right, Felix is done. We'll bring in Kimbrel, the new call-up. I mean, I think he was up here last year. But we'll bring him up, and we will let him ride the seventh and maybe even the eighth depending on how well he pitches here. He's going to ground that one to second base. Soriano makes the play. On to first. And that's the first out of the inning. We got Terenz up now. 1-1 one, one count to him. That's a pop-up to Albert Pujols. The machine is going to travel into foul territory, make the play with ease. Two down. Paul Mulder, one of the only guys to have any sort of damage to this Mets team so far today. Oh, way past the two-seamer. And you know what time it is. It's knuckler time. Strike three. Inning over. Nobody touches the knuckler. Nobody touches the knuckler. And now Pujols, he's five for five today. With a grand salami. Make that six for six with a double. A Mick double. Albert Pujols is the greatest player of all time. What do you want me to say? <laughs> six for six with a walk. He's got a double. He's got a grand slam and a couple singles. I don't really know what else he's got, but he's got a lot of stuff. He's been killing the baseball today. He is the Pirates' worst enemy. Their best friend is Barry Bonds because Barry Bonds can't do crap. I don't know why, but he can do anything. I really want to go after that. <laughs> I have been known to swing at pitches up in the zone like that. Up at the chest. I've been known to swing at that. But not today. Even though I probably should. I mean, it's 27-4. to 4. I probably should have swung at that. 
<laughs> can Barry Bonds outrun this throw? He can! Barry <laughs> Oh my god, of course he can! What are the Pirates doing? I mean, when it rains, it pours. It's getting ugly here in Pittsburgh. That's going to be a double play, but it will score another run. So Sosa gets another RBI out of it. This is just getting out of hand, man. This is crazy. Was that three for six for Willie Mays? Can Willie Mays do any more? I mean, he's the home run champion. The home run derby champion, I should say. But I have yet to hit a home run with him outside of the home run derby. Why did I swing at that? Because it's the top of the eighth and I'm winning 28 to 4. That's why. <laughs> All right. Let's get Kimbrel going in the eighth. And then we'll let Vita Blue go in the ninth. Even though Kimbrel, maybe we should let him go nine. He strikes out Griffey Sr. He's got Kiner up now. Two, three, and four. He sends that to center field. Mantle tracks it. And that'll be the second out of the inning. And now it's Prince Fielder. He has a home run. And it was a deadly home run. A bomb. And now he got another one. He got another single. Good for the Prince. He's starting to figure it out. It's a little too late, but he's starting to figure it out. Pitcher getting tired. Yeah, he'll be out after this one. But we just got to get one more out. Josh Hamilton's at the plate. One, two count. We'll give him the knuckler. No chance. Oh, how do you not go after that, Josh? Oh, what? Are you serious? He didn't go after that one either? Oh, but he goes after that. Okay, whatever. Jeter on the first. That's the end of the eighth. Craig Kimbrell looks pretty good. I feel confident having him uh, pitch in the, the postseason if we need him. Duran will stay on here for the top of the ninth. They really should just call the mercy rule at this point, but we play on. Bench will get a leadoff single. <laughs> uh, this is the most runs we've scored in franchise history. Not franchise. Well, maybe it isn't franchise. I don't know how many runs the Mets have scored in franchise history, but this is definitely the most runs we've scored in uh, series history is what I wanted to say. I feel like I'm just going to swing at everything <laughs> at this point. If it works, cool. We get on base again. But the faster we can get this game over with, the better. Because uh, this is just embarrassing for both parties. We don't need to be here. We've, we've done enough to them. This is like the Simpsons meme where the, the one kid, I don't really watch the Simpsons, so where the one kid, uh, he says, stop it, stop it, he's already dead. That's what This is what it feels like right now. We just keep on beating a dead body right now. They just keep on scoring runs. But finally, you know what? I'm gonna send I'm gonna send him. Go, Soriano. I don't care. Get this game over with. Throw him to first, get him out. Thank you. Perfect. Double play. We go to the bottom of the ninth. <laughs> it doesn't matter. We don't need any more runs. Because all Vita Blue needs to do is get three outs and this one's over. Imagine if the Pirates come back and win this game 29 to 28 in the bottom of the ninth. <laughs> And we needed that 29th run, and Soriano could have been that, but I screwed it up, or I sent him around. That would, that would be, I would probably delete the channel if the Pirates came back and won this game 29-28. That's a guarantee. If the Pirates do it, I'm marking it down. If the Pirates come back and win this game, I'm deleting the channel. But I don't think they will. Strike three on Urias, and Vita Blue is delivering. Can he strike out the side in order? 1-1 one, one to Brandon Lowe. He fouls that off the first base side. One more pitch. All the Pirates fans have gone home except for the super loyal ones who just are super drunk and they just want to stay, sit in the ballpark. Here comes the curveball. Strike three. And the Mets win. Win number 97 on the year. And it was a dominant one to say the least. The boys get it done. King Felix had 11 strikeouts. Looked pretty dominant. Pirates were th also there. <laughs> the 15th win for Felix Hernandez this season, 36 hits, is actually insane. Not just insane, it's actually insane. Albert Pujols gets player of the game because he went 6-for-6 six six with 5 RBIs, including a Grand Slam. 
I mean, just look at the box score, man. Jeter, absolutely unbelievable. Mickey Mantle, unbelievable. Pujols, unbelievable. Barry Bonds, not that great. <laughs> Sosa, unbelievable. So many doubles. I mean, look at all the doubles. So Jeter had a double. Pujols had a double. Sosa had two. Soriano had one. Pujols had a grand slam. Mantle had a, a home run. Bonds had two RBIs. Jeter had four. Pujols had five. Sosa had six. Mantle had two. Boggs had three. Bench had one. Mays had one. Soriano had three. Absolutely insane amounts of RBIs. Just a crazy amount. That's probably the best game that I've ever played in terms of offensive production. I mean, that sixth inning was un unbelievable. And we get a massive W, 28 to four. I mean, we did put up 23 in simulation against the, the Dodgers, so it's not un uncalled for to put up that many runs, but doing it in an actual game is crazy. All right, so we have wins number 97. Let's submit the games against the, the Nationals. And that is number 99. So this could be win number 100 right here against the Marlins. Let's get it. There it is. We've won 100 games for the first time in the series. But can we win 105? I don't know. No, we can't because we lost literally every other game except for the win 100. So, all right. Let's see what happens here. Our triple Did our AAA team lose? Really? Wow, our AAA team lost 5-1. to one. Is it because I took... Wait, no, I didn't even take David Price. David Price didn't go... Unbelievable. I guess I should have managed that a little bit better. But whatever, doesn't matter. We have 102 wins now. We finished with the Marlins. And... We finished with 103 wins. That could have been a lot better. But we really screwed that up. We could have had a lot more wins. Alright, award winners. Barry Bonds wins the Hank Aaron. And Albert Pujols wins the MVP of the league. We did it, boys. We got, yeah, we did trade for him at the deadline. But hey, we did it. 49 home runs, 140 RBIs. He hit 331, had a slugging of 643, an OPS of over 1,000. I mean, this is, yeah, this is clearly MVP type of numbers. 49 home runs, absolutely insane numbers from Pujols. We got ourselves an MVP. We didn't win a Cy Young. It's okay. Even though we had some crazy uh, win totals. But we don't win a Cy Young. It's Walter Johnson who goes back to back. Just with different teams. Batting title does not go. Unfortunately to a Met. Which is kind of sucky. Barry Bonds. Finishes in second. To Ty Cobb. Okay. Reliever of the year goes to the younger version of Craig Kimbrell. <laughs> not, the, uh, not the one that we have. So good for him. We get nothing here. As Jordan Westberg wins the National League Rookie of the Year. But we did see that Barry Bonds wins the batting title. The Hank, or not the batting title, the Hank Aaron Award. And yes, I know, I know that the two guys that won awards for us are the two guys that we made trades for at the deadline. But hey, they still had to finish the season strong. So say what you want. But we, we won these awards. These are our players. <laughs> these are our awards. I'm claiming them. Barry Bonds wins the Hank Aaron Award. 34 home runs, 84 RBIs, even though I didn't hit a home run with him. In the actual game, he did it all himself. 338 average, OPS over 1,000, 1,100. His slugging was 670. I mean, just amazing numbers from Barry Bonds. Gold glove pitcher, gold glove catchers. Here's all the gold gloves. Jeter wins gold glove shortstop, so that's cool. Uh, what else do we get? Any other awards? Silver sluggers. We got Albert Poles wins silver slugger first base. And that is, oh, no, Willie, Willie Mays wins back-to-back -back Silver Slugger outfields. So good for him. Those are the awards. League leaders, we got a bunch of awards here. We will uh, quickly go through them. I'm not going to read them because that will take too long. But you guys can see uh, if you want to pause or anything like we normally do. If you want to see who has uh, the top 10 or top 8, whatever it is, for, uh, for the stats. And then I will go uh, back over to American League just so you can see over there. I don't know if you care about, um, as much about the American League, but we might as well take a nice little peek skis at who's over, who's doing well in the American League because we're going to have to play one of these teams if we want to get to the World Series and, and win it. We're going to have to play one of the teams here. So it could be the Tigers. It could be the Astros. could be the, the Twins. I'm seeing a lot of uh, 
lot of people up there so the final thing we'll take a look at is stats and stuff here really quickly greg maddox 18 and 7 had a really good year his first year here in a full year here in new york his era is 357 as as long as we can pitch well in the postseason i don't really care how our regular season did i mean we we did pretty well here uh otani didn't really hit much this season didn't hit at all 11 wins for Tom Glavin. We traded for him at the deadline. He played pretty well. He did his job. Felix Hernandez, we saw how good he was. Back-to-back 15-win -back seasons for Felix is crazy. A little bit of a high ERA, but remember what I say about ERAs in this series. You always got to add one, or you got to subtract one for a real-life ERA. So if this was in our normal series, he'd have a 3.58 instead of a 4.58. So you just got to subtract one uh, for everybody's ERAs. But he had a good year as well. Babe Ruth... We brought in in free agency. He had a good season. We we mainly brought him in for his, his bat because we have uh, Shohei Otani as well. The kind of storyline stuff. Three, uh, 35 home runs for Babe Ruth this season. Bullpen stuff was pretty good. Vita Blue had a good year. David Price, obviously, we know what he did in, uh, in AAA. Uh, Joe Nathan had a good year as well. Kenley Jansen didn't really pitch much. Clay Holmes didn't pitch much. Trevor Hoffman decent year in the bullpen billy wagner closing it down 37 saves much better than he had a previous season in 2020 uh 2022 or 2023 excuse me with 31 for the angels and then the lineup jeter had 20 home runs 97 rbis 277 average really really good numbers from the leadoff man i don't know if he'll be the leadoff man next season we'll have to figure it out mickey mantle 35 home runs 112 driven in 297 average I mean, he's just, he's Mickey Mantle. He's what you expect. And here he is, the National League MVP, 49 home runs. We took a look at his numbers. We took a look at Barry Bonds' numbers. Sammy Sosa, only 11 home runs this year. Did not play much because I think Griffey was playing much, a lot in right field. So Sosa didn't really get to play much. But when he did, he played okay in the time that he was in. Willie Mays, the home run derby champion, 37 home runs, 291 average. Good numbers there. Johnny Bench also had pretty good numbers behind the plate. Then you got Alfonso Soriano. I mean, a lot of those RBIs are from this past game. <laughs> good numbers there. Wade Boggs, good numbers as well. On the bench, Griffey, also pretty good numbers. Jorge Posada, didn't play much, but when he did, he played pretty well. David Wright, we just brought him up. Mike Trout played for a lot of it, but then we switched him out. I think he was playing in right field mostly. He did okay. Lou Gehrig, he was playing a lot until we switched for Albert Pujols. And he was doing good for the main part, but I just wanted Albert Pools. That's basically all I did. So I just wanted Albert, Albert Pools on the team. So now it is time for the postseason. We play against, it looks like it's going to be the Colorado Rockies. Hey, we won the AA championship, by the way. It's going to be the Colorado Rockies. Remember how we do it in the postseason. We play the entirety of the postseason in one episode. And if we get to the Game 7 of the World Series, that is its own video. I hope it doesn't come to that, but if it does... Game 7 is its own video. I jump in and I play games and quick manage games if we are down in a series or if we looks like we're going to lose it. That's how we do that. So I'll explain it more in the next episode when we actually do the postseason. But if you're curious, go back and watch Season 1's postseason. You'll get the, it's the same thing. So thank you guys so much for stopping by and watching. I truly appreciate it. If you enjoyed, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, join the Juice Club, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.